hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be joining us from. Uh, my name is Karina Ivanian. I'm an intake advisor here at the International Students and Programs Office, also known as ISPO at UC San Diego. Um, ISPO is one of the four units in the Global Initiatives Department, which also includes uh, International Faculty and Scholars Office, study abroad in the office of the Assistant Vice Chancellor of Global Initiatives. And today we will be talking about graduate student housing. Um, again, as I mentioned, my name is Karina Ivanian uh, and I'm joined by a lot of amazing presenters today. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to them to introduce themselves as well. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Gabby Hoffman. I'm the Assistant Director of International Student Experience and Engagement. Um, I also work at the International Students and Programs Office alongside Karina um, and oversee a lot of the programming and um, different opportunities um, for our students to become engaged in the campus um, and really make the most of your student life while you're here at UC San Diego. We're very excited to welcome you soon. I'll go ahead and pass it along to my colleague Shauna. Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Shauna Slabiota. My I use pronouns she and hers, and I work in the Division of Graduate Education and Postdoctoral Affairs. And part of my role um, in GEPA, as we call it, is organizing new graduate student orientation. So we are working on um, various welcome events for you all in the fall uh, as we speak. Um, and Thank you again for allowing me to be a part of this. I will pass it off to Judy and Myra. Hello, everyone. My name is Judy Williams. I'm an operations analyst for um, housing and dining and hospitality. I oversee um, two of our seven communities, one of which we will not be talking about today because it's faculty and staff housing. And then I also oversee um, one of our grad, graduate housing, um, which is the Coast Apartments, which we will be talking to today, about today. And I'm gonna turn it over to Myra. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Myra and I work in housing allocations office. And what I do, um, we manage the wait list. We make sure that the students get housing on time. And we also issue those contracts. And I'll pass it on to Camille. Hello, everyone. My name is Camille Kenga, pronouns she, hers. I serve as the assistant director of the Hub Basic Needs Center, but today representing your basic needs off-campus housing office. I can pass it to Marissa. Hello, everyone. My name is Marisa Islas, pronouns she, hers, and I'm the basic needs housing and education assistant at the Basic Needs Center. And I deal with general housing consultations as well as basic needs consultations. And I help oversee the peer education program. Thank you. I'll pass it off to Angela. Hi, I'm Angela. Um, I'm an international student from USD. I'm also a graduate student. I'm from China. I'm having my internship with Room Chaser. Thank you for help here. I'll pass it to Alexia. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alexia. I'm French and I'm doing my internship with Room Chaser with a J1 visa. And I've been living in San Diego for almost a year. And we're going to introduce Room Chaser later, but basically we do housing for students. Thank you all okay. so much. Um, <laughs> As you can see, we have a great group together and we're all super excited to share these resources with you. Um, and before we dive deeper into the content today, um, a few housekeeping things. Um, if you know you joined us previously for the other pre-arrival webinars, you may know um, that you are in listen-only mode, which means you can hear us, but we can't hear you. And this is where the Q&A function uh, on your screens is super important. This is gonna be the main way we're gonna um, accept questions today. If by any chance we don't have enough time to answer your questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us by visiting icontact.ucsd.edu. Um, so this is in particular a great way to connect with ISPO advisors about any questions you may have. And then lastly, we are recording. So um, after this webinar, um, within the next two weeks, um, we're going to upload the recording to inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. And this is also the website that um, you can use to register for any upcoming webinars. Um, and again, just um, 
if you're curious of what that Q and A function looks on your screen, um, you can see it on the screen. Um, one of our presenters will either type the answer um, in the function in the feature, or we will try to answer them live. Um, so we'll do our best to leave enough time at the end to do a live Q and A um, session. And then this is our agenda today. Um, we're going to do quick reminders from ISPO and um, as well as graduate admissions reminders. Um, and then we'll dive into talking about on-campus housing, um, off-campus housing, and um, other resources that are available to you. Um, we'll uh, finish it up with some deadlines and reminders, um, and then we'll dive into our Q&A um, session. And with that, we're going to get started. Great, thank you, Karina. Yes, let's uh, first get started for those of you who are not familiar with a quick review of our ISFO website and the first steps checklist. So if you're not familiar already, I highly recommend you bookmark inewstudent.ucsd.edu. Um, this webpage resides on the International Students and Programs Office and really provides a comprehensive overview for new students to get started, international students specifically, to get started at UC San Diego. So you'll see here when you land on this page, if you click on graduate students, you'll be taken to another page that provides um, a list, a checklist of items based on where you are at in your process of coming to UC San Diego. So you'll see there, first step, requesting immigration documents, for example. This will walk you through the process of how to apply for your visa documents, and your visa appointment, and so forth. And we'll, we'll then, again, walk you through the various different steps of coming to UC San Diego, including how to look for housing, which of course we are covering today, and various other pieces such as immunization requirements, enrollment, and so forth. So please take a look at this page as soon as possible and make sure it's a resource you have by your side through this journey to coming to UC San Diego. Hello everyone, I'm here to share some reminders from graduate admissions. So um, please be sure to log into your application account and I will put a link in the chat directly to this um, system. And check to see if the statement of legal residence form is listed as a to-do item for your program. This form is not required for all programs, so um, it's best to check the system and um, see if you need to take care of this mission and, and um, try and do that as soon as you can. As a reminder, most students are provisionally admitted at this time. It's important to note that your provisional admission should not impact your ability to get immigration documents. Uh, it does mean that you will have to provide official documentation to the graduate admissions office, such as final transcripts or official test scores in order to finalize your admission. And we do uh, ask that you do that ideally sometime this summer, but um, you can also bring your documents physically to our office after you arrive in San Diego. If you have any questions about this information, please send an email to gradadmissions at ucsd.edu and our admissions staff will be able to help you out. So this is actually a screenshot um, of the applicant portal. So you can see uh, on the left hand side, any status updates would be posted towards the top. You can see here that the, for example, the statement of legal residence form um, is listed as some as an item to complete. So this is what it would look like if you need to submit that form. And then in the uh, underneath that is where any pending admissions documents would be listed. So if you have documents here in the section, you need to be sure to submit those to graduate admissions to finalize your admission. And I also want to draw your attention to the highlighted section where it says admitted students. So um, similar to ISPO, we have um, a list of items, a checklist for all new grad students to complete. And you can find all of those steps um, listed on the admitted students section of our website. There's things to do immediately, things to do before you arrive on campus, as well as items for when you arrive and uh, steps that are specific to international students. So please review this information. Oh, and um, if you have any questions, please contact us. Thank you.
Okay, so now we're going to talk about um, our grand and family housing and the amenities that we have to offer. So this is six of our um, grad housing um, apartments that we offer for grad students. As I mentioned before, one of we do have seven, but one is not listed because it's faculty and staff housing. Um, our three newer communities, Mesa Nuevo, Nuevo West, and Nuevo East, they're more presented in the slides. Coast Apartments, One Miramar Street Apartments, and Mesa are not. So I'm just going to share um, a little bit about the, those three communities before we go to the next slide. Our Coast Apartments um, are located uh, more on campus. There's uh, 106 apartments at Coast. There's 21 studios, 54 one-bedrooms, and 31 two-bedrooms. They're all unfurnished. Um, Coast is our really popular apartments, but there's also a very long wait list to get into Coast. One Miramar Street Apartments, um, there are all consist of all two bedroom, one bathroom apartments. They're divided into four different buildings. And then we have um, our Mesa Apartments, which is divided into two distinct areas. One is Central Mesa, and Central Mesa has um, nine one-bedroom apartments, 100, and which are 688 square feet. They have 182 two-bedroom one-baths, which are 838 square feet. And then they have nine three-bedroom one-bath apartments, but the three bedrooms are offered first to families with three or more children. Um, then we can go to the next slide. So this is um, Mesa Nuevo. Mesa Nuevo has um, 850 furnished studios, which are approximately 275 square feet. They utilities are included, which is um, water, cable, internet, and parking. Um, the utilities that are included, they're in all the the uh, they're included in every one of the apartments that we're going to be talking about. So if you can go to the next slide. Nuevo, uh, Mesa Nuevo also have two bedroom, two bath, unfurnished apartments, which are approximately 950 square feet, and then three bedroom, two bath, unfurnished apartments, which are approximately 1,350 square feet. Um, this picture is a, the quad for Nuevo West. As you can see, it's really it's very spacious, very beautiful and it's just overlooking uh, Nuevo West. Nuevo West has four bedroom, two bathroom, furnished apartments, approximately 1,350 square feet. Um, and then uh, of course utilities are included. Nuevo West also have um, six bedroom, three bath, furnished apartments, approximately 20, 150 um, square feet. I know that it seems a little intimidating to have six bedrooms, but they're very, very spacious floor plans, very beautiful, very spacious. So it, it's not as it's not as crowded as you might think. There's um, two levels. As you can see, the upper level has four bedrooms and two baths. And the first floor level has two bedrooms and one bath. This is the kitchen at Nuevo West, very beautiful. They offer the stainless steel appliances. Also, this is the only community that has microwaves. None of the other communities have microwaves in them. Nuevo East have one bedroom, one bath, unfurnished apartments. It's 480 square feet. Next slide, please. And this, okay. So this is the um, living room area for Nuevo West. And this is one of the bedrooms for Nuevo West, very large. As you can see, this is a very large bed, front, uh, bed in there. So it's, it's very, very large, very spacious bedrooms. This is um, in Nuevo West, um, er everyone gets their own sink. So that's pretty nice, although it's, you know, it's six bedrooms, it's 
sounds like a lot, but everyone has their own um, sinks in the bathrooms. And then this is some of the amenities that we have to offer. There's a game room, there's a fitness center, there's a swimming pool, there's um, a, a pit area, a lounging area, which is located near the pub. There's a pub. There's also a splash zone for the children. And all of the amenities, no matter which community you live in, you um, can use all the amenities. This slide, um, the building on the left is um, the exchange. The exchange is the hub of all the Nuevo East operations. There's also spaces in this building where students can um, reserve their study rooms, there's, um, there's lounges, and you're, you're able to reserve those spaces. And the building on the right is um, Patone. This is a map to all of our communities. As you can see, we're a very close-knit community. So all of the communities we just spoke about, they're all here. So you'll be surrounded by other students, other grad students, other families, professional students. And I just wanted to point out that the communities that we just spoke about, they're not on campus. So, uh, but there are shuttles that take you to campus. There's also um, a bridge that connects grad and family housing to campus. It's, you can, you know, ride your bike, you can walk across the bridge. Just wanted to, to make sure that you're aware that the, the apartments that we just spoke about, the communities that we just spoke about, they are not on campus. And I think that's gonna be it for this slide. Yeah. So now it's over to Myra. Thank you, Yuri talk about the after the offers of admissions will be eligible to apply on the wait list. Um, this year, we have a new policy. As, as soon as you get your PID and your single sign-on credentials, then you will be able to apply on the wait list. If you don't have these credentials, we recommend that you wait and until you get it and then be able to apply. Um, what is the wait time? The wait time, it really depends on the communities. Um, Judy mentioned six communities. Some of the popular communities are coast. Of course, that community has a very long wait list. Um, the estimated wait time for that is up to 24 months, but we have other communities like One Miramar Apartments, Mesa, Mesa Nueva, Nuevo West and Nuevo East, that they have estimated wait time of two to six months. Um, we offer two, um, two year fixed term to every student. Um, it doesn't really mean that you have to stay the full two years. If for some reason you need to move out sooner than that, you can do that. All you need to do is just to provide us a 30 day notice. Um, the two year is the max time that you can stay in grad housing. And we offer this in order to cycle through the waitlist and to offer more opportunity to more students on the waitlist. Um, this is our contact information. We, um, you can contact us via email, sending us an email to gradfamilyhousing at ucsd.edu, or you can give us a phone call. If you're in the area, if you want to come and talk to us in person, we are located in the Nuevo East community in the Exchange Building. Next slide. Now, once you complete your housing application, I'm going to explain a little bit about the offer process. On the application, we ask for general information. Um, we want to know your marital status, if you're coming as a single or, or if you're coming as a couple or family. 
And what we consider family is coupled with children. Um, we also ask you your housing preferences. You will have to enter three of your housing preferences. It doesn't have to be from the same community, it can be from different communities, um, but we ask you for three. Um, your need housing day, that's very important because the contract will be um, based on that day that you enter in your housing application. So we ask to be the most accurate as possible because during the summer, we issue so many contracts. And honestly, it's kind of hard for us to go back and change the day. That's why we ask to be the most accurate as possible. Um, once we get to your name, we will send you the first offer. You will have 48 hours to accept or decline the offer. If you accept the first offer, we will assign you the space. But if you refuse the first offer, um, your application will return to the waitlist for a second offer. On your second offer, if you accept the offer, um, we will assign you the space. But at that point, if you refuse, your application will be archived and then you will have to reapply on the wait list. After you accept the offer, we'll, sign, we'll send you the contract. You will have 24 hours to review and sign. If you're a single student, then you will get roommate information as well. And the last step of the process will be the online orientation. And we're going to be answering some questions. All right. Hello again, everyone. We are your basic needs off campus housing department. And thank you to ISPO for inviting our office to share our resources. Again, Cameo Kenga, pronoun she hers. And I serve as the assistant director over at the hub. And hello again, everyone. My name is Marisa Islas, pronoun she, her, hers, and I'm the basic needs housing education assistant at the Hub. Hope everyone is having a lovely Thursday so far. Today, we'll be reviewing some general housing information and resources that are available to the entirety of our campus community. And we wish to honor the specific and additional barriers to access that international students typically have to navigate through. So we will also be sharing some tips with you all. So what is the Off-Campus Housing Office? The Off-Campus Housing Office offers resources to aid students in their transition to off-campus living. A resource some of y'all may already be familiar with is the Off-Campus Housing website. Here you can access property listings or upload your own property listing, do a roommate search, seek platform recommendations, read up on first-time renting tips, lease overviews, emergency resources, and more. So once you enter off-campus housing office, sorry, offcampushousing.ucsd.edu into your search bar, you will see a layout like this. And this website is solely for UCSD affiliates, so you can log in with your UCSD user ID or PID if you are a UCSD student, faculty, or staff. And if you are a property lister or someone without a user ID or PID, you'll see the option on the right to log in as a guest. And these login credentials requirements assist in creating a safer platform. So when searching for housing, you can adjust your preferences by how much you are looking to spend. If you want a house or apartment, uh, the specific location you're looking for and other specific requests. And you can also find resources on how to review rental agreements and how to understand your responsibilities as a tenant, with which are both fundamental parts of the housing search. And additionally, the roommate search tool on the website provides students with the opportunity to search for potential roommates that also attend UCSD. And through this feature, students also have the option to create their own roommate profiles, including important information relating to preferences and roommate characteristics. ISPO hosts their own housing-related resource information on their website at istudents.ucsd.edu. On this page, you can find information for both on and off-campus living, as well as comprehensive breakdown of common housing terms, avoiding scams, additional housing costs of living information, and questions to ask a landlord or property manager and more.
And to add, here are three additional housing resources that I highly recommend. First is the AS Housing Guide, which serves as an amazing off-campus housing guide for students that would like a visual breakdown of what a housing search should look like. And the Summer 2021 Off-Campus Housing Webinar is another great resource to use as your supplemental guide for off-campus living. This webinar includes presentations from the Hub Basic Needs Center and Off-Campus Housing, Office of Ombuds, Student Legal Services, Transportation Services, Associated Students, and Student Life. And lastly, Student Legal Services allows students to access information regarding leasing and legal topics. I encourage anyone that is in need of legal counseling to schedule an appointment through their website. And next slide, please. And moving on to non-UCSD affiliated public search platforms, which oftentimes assist in finding alternative housing, other listings, potential roommates, and potentially cheaper leases. So PadMapper is a public platform we like to recommend along with Spare Room. PadMapper is a property search website and Spare Room is a roommate search website. Also, the UCSD unofficial Facebook housing group is a community resource students use to find roommates and housing. Additionally, there are transitional housing options such as hostels, Airbnb rentals, and verbal rentals. And you can also search for Corporate Housing San Diego to find other transitional housing options geared towards traveling professionals. These apartments are short-term and often furnished. And now, although these are alternative resources are helpful, we must uplift some extra tips when navigating sites such as Facebook. One is to never make any payment without viewing the inside of the property, either virtually or in person, as well as avoid trusting Facebook accounts which are newer or had a history of spamming. Always visit the profile of the person posting, and when looking for housing, try to find those posted by existing UCSD students or alum. Also, try to find roommate situations with other students if possible, and look for shorter-term housing available if that's in your um, something that you are looking for. Next slide, please. All right, so diving into some housing search tips that have been curated by the typical concerns we hear from students. So when to begin? In general, the answer is going to be, it depends, right? It depends on what type of lease you are looking for and when you are looking to sign the lease. However, when centering the trends in the housing market, if you are looking for a summer lease, the time is between now and May. And if you are looking for a fall lease, the time varies. But we do suggest you begin looking no later than June. Since San Diego has a large college student community, you may also want to consider if properties are willing to hold a listing with a holding fee until you are ready to move in. Next, you want to start by building your list of needs versus wants and truly understand what are your non-negotiables when it comes to a listing. This list should include your budget, preferred locations, transit options, meaning how are you going to get to campus, and potential roommates and amenities. We also want to note that you should be strategic in regards to your affordability. So consider a month to month lease if your financials are less stable and a full year commitment um, if otherwise. Additionally, a few tips when navigating your search include to request a virtual and or in-person tour of the property. Be sure to not sign the lease or pay any deposits until you've been able to physically check out the property. We recognize that that may not always be possible, so please be sure that you can always request photos or a virtual tour. And of course, ensure that the property aligns with your wants and needs. With the housing crisis, it is easy to want to quickly find housing to ensure stability. However, there is so much value in ensuring that your holistic experience of living off campus is one that will help you during your time at UC San Diego. And a quick note, all of these tips and more are comprehensively through our educational campaign. It gives a thorough breakdown of the housing search from where and when to start, to negotiating leases, to housing services in the area. And this upcoming spring quarter, we will actually be launching our community-centered educational campaign that has an international student video, so be on the lookout for that. You can check it out on either on our Instagram or TikTok pages at UCSD Basic Needs, 
or on our website, basicneeds.ucsd.edu under housing resources, educational campaign. Next slide. One more. Thank you. So as y'all may expect, commuting comes with its own unique challenges. When I was an undergraduate student, I commuted for my first year. And what really helped me was looking out for any resources available. So if y'all are on Facebook, there's a commuters group that allows students to connect with other fellow commuters. And there's also a commuter resources page on Trident Link with a list of helpful links. As well as on the off-campus housing website, we have a lot of resources for commuters, such as information on the campus shuttles, parking, affordable grocery stores, and a new plan your commute tool to review transit efficient locations. Next slide, please. So as in terms of housing scams, you have to consider plenty of options and be wary of these scams. If it seems too good to be true, it most likely is. So familiarize yourself with your rights and responsibilities as a tenant. Again, if you need any legal counseling, reach out to Student Legal Services and please visit isposeisafety.ucsd.edu webpage for more information. Thank you. Next slide, please. Hi again, guys. Uh, so I'm Alexia with Room Chaser. Uh, so about Room Chaser, we're a company based in San Diego and founded by an international student. We do housing for students and we try to make the process as smooth as possible for international students. So here is some info about Room Chaser. So we have housing all over San Diego, including uh, by UCSD, which is in UTC La Roya in Pacific Beach, Mission Bay, Linda Vista, and downtown. So basically, you can choose to live close to the beach or close to the campus or in between, but it's off-campus housing. Uh, the second point is that we make it super easy to qualify for you guys. So you basically just uh, have to send your I-20 form and your passport um, to get approved. So to give you an idea of pricing, uh, we have shared bedrooms start at 825 per month and our private bedrooms start at 1050 per month. And it does include the utilities. So by the way, it's all furnished and you can get a summer or a semester contract to get you started. Um, you can find us on roomchaser.com or you can just screenshot this slide and you have the QR code. Angela? We can't hear you, Angela. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Angela. I'm an international student from USD. Uh, I'm also a graduate student. I'm from China. And uh, I was here since last, last August. And I like moved three times because housing in San Diego is really like um, it's hard. So I'm very glad to help. And uh, before I uh, play a quick video, I would like to share some couple uh, some tips uh, with some graduate students. Uh, first, I highly recommend that um, you choose to live with a roommate, which is like more cheaper, more affordable, and uh, you can have like a concept of the different nationalities and different cultures and as an Asian student I'm glad like um since I moved I I like uh, having the different backgrounds of roommates uh which is I'm uh glad and joined um and also in room chaser we have like roommates matching system you can like um you, you can like check the the profile of the roommates uh which is good and um so here is a video about uh, housing around US UCSD. Thank you, Prina. Number one, UCSD and the UTC area. What's great about it is super close to school and you can walk, bike, or take the bus. Sorry, apologies. Let me um, start again. I just realized I was muted when we started playing the video. Congratulations on making it to UCSD. It is one of the best schools around. In this video, we'll review three neighborhoods that Room Chaser believes are great for UCSD students. Number one, UCSD and UTC area. What's great about it is super close to school. You can walk, bike, or take the bus and get to school in 10, 20 minutes. 
What is good to know, it is a mostly luxurious apartment community that is quite expensive. And most students share a room and some even rent out their living room as a room to reduce costs. Check out this room chaser property located in Via Mallorca. It takes just 10 minutes by bus to get to UCSD. Number two, Pacific Beach. What's great about it, Pacific Beach is a very typical Southern California neighborhood right by the beach. Perfect for nightlife and surfing. Living in PV is an awesome experience. What is good to know, it is further from campus and depending on where you live in PV, it can take up to an hour to get to campus by bus or trolley. This two bed, two bath unit is located in Pacific Beach. And it takes about 40 minutes to get to campus. Check it out. Number three is Linda Vista. What is great about it, it is one of the most affordable neighborhoods in central San Diego and students can afford private bedrooms. What is good to know, you get what you pay for. This neighborhood is more affordable, but housing is lower quality. That means no amenities such as schools or fitness centers and no on-site maintenance. This three bed, two bath townhouse is located in Linda Vista and it takes just 37 minutes to get to UCSD by bus. We hope that now you have a better idea of the geography of San Diego. Contact our housing advisors at roomchaser.com for any questions about housing in San Diego. Um, when it comes to housing, there's obviously no such thing as too many resources, as you may have found out from all of the information we shared today. Um, another resource that we would like to share with you is Court, um, and this is a furniture rental company um, where you can pay by the month, um, and then they can help you order all of the furniture uh, for your unfurnished apartments. Um, they also have a referral program, so if you utilize their services and refer a friend, um, you can get $50. Um, gift card. Um, so please check out their website um, and connect with them if you have um, any other questions. Um, before we dive into our um, Q&A session, I just want to share a few programs with you um, and just kind of get you started um, in terms of thinking about connecting with the UC San Diego community. Um, so one of the ways is ISPO's special programs, um, also known as I programs. And so these are offered throughout the academic year um, and are a great way to connect with other students on campus. Um, coffee hours is one of our most popular programs, and this is an opportunity for you to um, connect with um, ISPO advisors and other students. Trident Trekkers is a program that we coordinate with UC San Diego Recreation. Um, and this is um, a way for students to explore the greater San Diego area by going on hikes or snorkeling, kayaking. Um, there's usually a fee associated with it, but um, it's a really nice way to kind of get off campus um, and explore a little bit of the city. Um, if you're interested in learning about any of these programs, um, please visit iprograms.ucsd.edu. Um, iEvents Calendar um, is also a great way to find events happening on campus, and usually here we'll feature all of the events with a global focus. Um, please follow us um, on Instagram. Um, we're really active there, and uh, we like to repost content from our campus partners, such as Basic Needs Hub. Um, so it's a great way to kind of stay connected and learn more about different resources on campus. Um, if you wanna learn more about COVID vaccines and different COVID related regulations, um, please visit returntolearn.ucsd.edu. Uh, and then for our upcoming um, deadlines and reminders, um, please make sure you started requesting your documents in iPortal. Also, as was mentioned earlier, you can start applying for on-campus housing um, once you get access to your UC San Diego credentials. We have a few more webinars coming up um, and you can register for those on inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. And then lastly, once September comes, we're gonna have our I orientation. Um, so more information about that coming soon. Um, and this is just a list of um, upcoming webinars. So if you'd like to learn more about funding or student life, um, CVS transfers or anything like that, please visit us on inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, and with that, uh, we're going to transition into questions. Um, so thank you all so much for submitting those um, in the Q&A feature. Um, I'm going to, we're going to try to answer as many live as possible. Um, and I'm curious if any of our campus partners would like to start us off. It looks like 
Um, we have quite a few um, about roommates and housing preferences. So it looks like one of the questions that we have is in regards to um, like preferences for on-campus housing. Um, so um, Judy or Myra, is there usually a preference between admitted doctoral students and master students um, and in the way that the allocations are done? And uh, no, everything is um, by the application date. So we, when we get to those students, we look at the application date when they apply, and they can apply to any communities. Um, some of the communities that we recommend because there's more inventory and the wait list is, the wait time is shorter. That will be the Nuevo East community and the Nuevo West. Um, in the larger floor plans, like four and six in Nuevo West and three and four in Nuevo East. Um, it looks like we also have questions about roommates. Um, so I wonder if maybe we can um, sort of discuss those as it relates to on-campus housing. And I know um, a lot of presenters on the call are also very knowledgeable about ways to find roommates um, if you're living off campus. Um, so maybe we will start with the grad and family life and then um, move on to some of our off-campus resources for that. Thank you. Yes, um, roommate is an option for grad and family housing. Um, if they, if the student already knows somebody that wants to live with, um, they can actually enter that information in their housing application. And they have, because we have floor plans like six bedrooms apartments, they have up to two, five roommates that they can enter in their housing application. Mm -hmm. um, we will try our best in grad family housing to match you, but it really depends on the availability. On the application, there's also an option to select if they want to be um, offered without the preferred roommate or if they want to wait until they get matched with a preferred roommate. But we do have that option. I'll pass it on to off campus housing. For off campus, there's definitely a couple of different ways to look for roommates. As Marissa mentioned earlier, our off-campus housing website, you're able to make a roommate profile and connect with students on there, um, as well as continuing to uplift as they're on the call with us, Room Chaser, as a lot of their listings available um, are shared spaces. Yeah, and also just to elevate the social opportunities to meet roommates like joining a cultural org or just social events offered through departments in general. That's a really great way to meet students. And in the spring quarter, so next quarter in May, there will also be a roommate mixer during our off-campus housing fair. So more to come on that, but um, just definitely trying to meet as many people as possible will open doors for potential roommates and seeing how they are. Also want to shout out the sample roommate mixer, so, sorry, sample roommate agreement from Student Legal Services, which I'll drop down in the chat. Alexia or Angela, anything else you would like to add to the roommate conversation? Uh, because uh, we are uh, off campus uh, housing provider, um, we do have like roommates matching system, which like you can check the profile of the roommate, your potential roommate, and you can find out which one is like you uh, to match your uh, needs. Yeah, that's it. Thank you all so much for sharing. Um, it's obviously one of those hard things, but um, hopefully, um, you know, also can, can bring a lot of um, interesting connections um, and exchanges um, when you live with the roommate. Um, it looks like we have quite a few questions about meal plans. Um, so are those included in, um, you know, housing contracts or can graduate students purchase those separately? Um, no, in grad housing, we don't offer any meal plans. Um, 
this is only for undergrads, um, but not, not for graduate students. We do have grocery stores close by. We have bonds. We also have, um, there's a market right across the street, but yeah, fortunately no milk plants. And then another question we're getting in terms of applications, sort of some of those logistics with the UCSD emails and like IDs and sort of that process. Um, Myra and Judy, I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but um, if you don't mind, could you please reiterate some of that information for our students? Um, yes, um, once the students accept their offers of admissions and they um, activate their um, single sign-on credentials, then they will be able to they will be able to apply on the wait list. Um, I highly recommend to the students that as soon as they get it applied and some of the students, they might be worried because they might think that it might be too late um, from previous years. But I can tell you that this year we have more housing. Last year, we just opened new communities like Nuevo East and Nuevo West. That is um, over 2,000 bed spaces more that we have this year. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we still have quite a few. Um, if any of you, if any of the questions stood out to you, please feel free to, to address those. I'm still kind of looking through, but um, we definitely have a lot of really great questions. Um, I see one of the questions um, said, what happens if we decide to intern outside of San Diego for the summer term? Will we still have to pay the rent for three months or do students normally terminate their contract and start a new one post-summer? Students who are be going to be going away for the summer, um, you could sublease your apartment during the summer quarter while you're away. As the person that you sublease to would have to be affiliated with the university in some kind of way in order to sublease your space. But no, we don't recommend that you terminate your contract because then if you do that, you have to start all over with the wait list again and you may not receive an offer by the time you come back after the summer. So you, you do have the option to sublease your space. If you do not sublease your space, then yes, you would still have to pay the rent um, for the time that you're gone in the summer. Thank you, Judy, for sharing that question. Um, it looks like we also have a few questions about transportation. Um, so particularly for, you know, since graduate housing is located um, a little bit away from campus and then also just for students who choose to live off campus. So if anybody would like to talk a little bit about shuttles or any other transportation resources. I know we don't have transportation folks on the call with us, but um, maybe. I, I yeah, Karina, I would like to share about my experience because I'm a student of international student from, from USD. And unfortunately, my driver license in China is kind of expired. I, I cannot get my local driver license yet. So I'm depending on the public transportation. But luckily, we have like college monthly pass, uh, which I can like um, taking the uh, the bus and the trolley, which is good. Um, if you don't have the budget for uh, getting a car or you have some trouble with the driver lessons, I highly recommend that you live nearby the campus or you near, uh, live nearby the uh, trolley stations. Um, it's, it's a good option. That's it. Thank you so much for sharing that, Angela. Anyone else? Yeah, I also wanted to add that students get the U pass for being able to ride on the blue line trolley and other trolley or buses for free through the pass. And it's through the Pronto app. I just dropped the link in the chat for others that want to look into that. There's quite a lot of really helpful resources on the transportation website. So um, I believe if you search up transportation.ucsd.edu, um, it's also a great way to, to learn more a little bit about getting around campus, um, both um, in terms of shuttles, but also um, just even kind of navigating campus since it is so big. So we highly encourage you to check out some of those resources. 
Um, and thank you, Marissa and Camille, for dropping them in the chat as well. Um, a few questions in regards to move-in and sort of um, in those cases where you need to postpone it or you're not able to move in by the date you're indicated. Um, so Maya or Judy, um, could you please tell us a little bit of what that process may look like and uh, what students may need to do in those cases? Um, yes. Um, you know, we understand that there are situations that happen and sometimes the students, they are not able to move in on the day given in the contract. Um, they can reach out to us. We we actually, those type of situations, we will have to ask for permission to our upper manager um, if we can make the change. It really depends how how long the student need to update that moving day. Like if it's a month or only a week, it's only a week or two weeks, we can manage that. But if it's a month or longer, then we will have to um, ask our manager for permission. Thank you for sharing. Um, there are a few questions in regards to kind of amenities um, and sort of what is usually provided when um, like on-campus housing mentions unfurnished versus furnished. And I wonder if we can even maybe um, broaden that question a little bit to some off-campus housing, because sometimes when you see a listing and it may say unfurnished, there still may be some amenities included. So I wonder if anybody would like to speak on that. I mean, I can speak for Coast Apartments. Coast is totally unfurnished. I mean, I know one of the questions were, um, you know, can they install washing machines? You're not permitted to install any additional appliances. Um, someone mentioned what types of stoves that they have, they're electric. Um, so the, they have just basically the stove, the refrigerator, um, and basically that's it for Coast. Um, Myra might be able to shed a little more light on what's offered in the newer communities as far as um, amenities. Thank you, Judy. Yes, um, for the newer communities um, in Nuevo East, um, that communities, the apartments are unfurnished, which means that they don't have any beds, they don't have any um, dressers or anything like that in the bedrooms, but in the kitchen, the apartment comes with a refrigerator and the stove. The stove is electric. Um, in the community Nuevo West, um, it's fully furnished. It has in the kitchen, it has the stove, the refrigerator, and it also has a microwave in the bedrooms. There's um it will come with the bed. It will also have a desk, um, a chair, and I think that will be all in the bedrooms. But in the in the living room area, it will have a sofa, and we'll have the basic furniture that the students need. Um, those communities, they don't have a unit washer and dryer, but they do have laundry facilities in the building. Um, also, we have a community that is called Mesa Nueva, which is also one of the newest communities. Um, that community offers in the floor plans, one, two, and three bedrooms in unit washer and dryer. Um, the studios are fully furnished and they don't have in-unit washer and dryer, but we do have laundry facilities in every other floor. In regards to off-campus, it's going to be very similar to what was shared for on-campus. If it does say unfurnished, 
Um, typically it won't have a bed. It won't have anything and general advisement, especially for luxury apartments that you may be renting. If it does say unfur unfurnished, be prepared to have to get all of those different furnitures, but amenities are different, right? That stove, microwave, uh, laundries in unit, et cetera. Um, but typically if you might be renting from maybe a single apartment or a uh, multifamily home, uh, don't be afraid to ask those questions because maybe older renters might keep some furniture there, um, but just don't be afraid to ask those types of questions. And I just wanted to add that with Room Chaser, or or units are fully uh, furnished. Uh, you just basically need to have your bed sheets. And for the amenities, it's going to depend on the complex and the units. But you, usually, you have washer dryer um, on complex or inside the the units. Thank you all so much for sharing that. Um, there's one question in regards to special STAR programs um, that I would like to address as well. Um, and so the question is, um, you know, it says summer, but what month exactly? Um, so every program, every department does um, early start programs differently. Um, so we'd highly encourage you as you're looking to identify those exact orientation dates or those exact, you know, um, possible move-in dates, please connect with your department to double check that information um, just so that you feel prepared um, and are aware of what your timelines may be. And again, those would be different depending on um, what program you're doing, um, which department you're working with. So um, I'd highly encourage you to check out um, their information for that. And it looks like we are at 9.30. So I would like to take a moment to thank all of our presenters today for sharing all of their wisdom in regards to housing with us. Um, again, it is one of those things that um, students find um, a bit stressful. So we hope this webinar helped to alleviate some of that stress. Um, this recording will be available um, after this webinar in the next two weeks, again, on inewstudentwebinars.ucsd.edu. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and connect with any of us. Um, we want to make sure that um, you feel comfortable and prepared um, once you arrive. And with that, I hope you all have a great rest of your day. And thank you so much for watching. <laughs>